From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning, dear friend. Welcome back. This is once again Wisdom for Life. My name is Pastor Alan Bagg, and we are getting together this week to study how to hear the voice of God, becoming more and more sensitive to His leading. Now, we had a look yesterday at, at why it is so important to hear His voice, and today we're going to get into the how. Once again, let's look at our scripture here, John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the thief, the same as a thief and a robber. Now, once again, remember, we're talking about the devil here. He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. We see here in verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And then he says in verse 3, to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. See, the devil's trying to lead us into danger, temptation, out of the will of God. And yet, praise God, we have Jesus leading us into success. Look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now that's where you want to be. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. I said it yesterday as well. I say it again. Somebody said, Pastor Alan, I don't hear the voice of God. Yes, you do. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you're born again, you're hearing the voice of God. That's for sure. And He is leading you into success. And it's not only for personal dreams and successes. It's to know what God's will is for your life. You know, someone says, I just want to know what God's will is. Well, Let's find out. He's speaking to us all the time. Now, yesterday we had a look at James 1 verse 5 to 8. We saw that uh, if we lack wisdom, we need to ask God in faith. So, number one, we need to step into these things by faith. We know that God speaks to us. We know that His Word tells us He does. So then I need to hear the Word of God on it. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And then also Proverbs 3, 5, we realize that uh, we cannot trust our own limited abilities and understandings. We cannot lean to my own understanding. I think that's probably the most difficult part of hearing God's voice is that when we start to step into these things, sometimes God will lead us contrary to what we think is right. I mean, you know, uh, I heard somebody say once, they never make a mistake. And I thought, oh, that's pretty arrogant. You never make a mistake. They said, no, no, I never go out and make a mistake on purpose. <laughs> no one actually does it. No one goes and makes a mistake. But you know, we sometimes make decisions that are wrong. And just based on the information we have, our limited knowledge. And so we make a, a decision, and the decision lands up hurting us. Sometimes it can even kill people. The wrong decision can cause the death of someone. And so uh, no one is doing that on purpose. So I need to know... When I make a decision, is this right or is it wrong? Now, remember, Proverbs tells us there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. And remember, he also said to the Israelites, I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. So if I want to live this life and live it abundantly, I need to know how to hear the voice of God to be able to make an accurate decision that will lead me in the right direction because I want to be in the center of God's will. And in the center of His will is protection. In the center of His will is provision. In the center of His will is deliverance and healing. And everything you could ever need is, 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 is found when you are serving God and you are walking in, in, in obedience to His word. Remember Deuteronomy 28 says, If you obey God and all that He commands you, then you will, uh, these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. All that He commands you, of course, is the Word of God, but it's also what He instructs you in. So when you're obeying God, when you're listening to His voice, and you hear a specific instruction, and you carry that instruction out, 
as you carry that instruction out, you're going to find that God's blessing is upon it. And that's when you experience the prosperity and the health and the protection, everything that He has for you. So let's get right into it. Come with me to Romans chapter 8. I want to introduce to you a terminology that we use that will enable you to understand when we talk about these things that uh, what we mean by when we hear the voice of God. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 14. The Bible says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, when we talk about sons of God, of course, uh, there it appears to be just the male. But you must remember that with God, there's neither male nor female. That's what the Word says. So when He talks about sons, He's not just talking about male here. He's talking about a position of authority. A son of God is someone that's born of God. And if you're female, you're born of God. We could call you a daughter of God. But I want you to know that, yeah, you're included in the sons of God. Even if you're female, you're also a son of God. As a daughter, <laughs> I'm sure you understand what I mean. So now it says, these are the sons of God. Who are they? Those that are led by the Spirit of God. Or you could say it this way. The sons of God, the children of God, are led by the Spirit of God. So if I'm a child of God, then I must be led by the Spirit of God. Or we could say this way. If I'm a child of God, I am led by the Spirit of God. So why don't you make that confession right now? Just put your hand on your heart. Lift your other hand to the Lord and say this with me. Remember the Bible says that if we speak something, it registers in our heart. The Bible says the tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And then he says, Lord, I write your word on the tablet of my heart. You do that by speaking. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that as a child of God, I am led by the Spirit of God. Remember Romans ten seventeen. faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. James 1, 5 says, If you lack wisdom, ask. Verse 6, But let him ask in faith. You see, God gives generously without reproach. We need to ask in faith and not doubting. Now, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then the spirit of faith, having believed, I speak. And so as you speak and declare these things, then your faith attaches to it and it begins to manifest in your life. So say it again with me. Say this, I believe as a child of God, I am led by the Spirit of God. Amen. See, now that's already beginning to rise up within you. So as a son of God, you are led by the Spirit of God. Now, let's go and have a look down here at verse 16. Now, before you look at verse 16, let me just ask you this question. What would be the most important question you could ever ask God? Am I saved? Isn't it? Am I really saved? How? I mean, that is the, I mean, that's the whole, that is the most important question of life. Am I going to heaven when I die? Now, how does God answer that? Verse 16, this is the most important question that could ever be asked. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, get a hold of that. Listen to the terminology. The Spirit bears witness, bears witness with our spirit, that we are children of God. So in other words, you don't have to ever uh, wonder whether you're saved. You don't ever have to uh, have any uh, sign out there. Lord, please show me. If ten camels come walking through the door right now, then I'll know that you love me. No, uh, He told you He loves you. He gave you His Son, Jesus, and died for you, paid the price, rose from the dead, and now is resurrected and set in the right hand of the Father. And He has imparted His Holy Spirit in us. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and as you confessed it with your mouth, as you said, Jesus, you are my Lord, what happened? You were instantly born again, and the Holy Spirit moved into your life. That's right. Paul said, do you not know that you are temples of the Holy Spirit? And so now the Holy Spirit's within you. Now remember this, when you're born again, uh, each, well, not just born again, all of us, every human being is really a spirit being. This yeah, this is my vehicle. This is not really me. This is the vehicle I'm, I'm walking in. It's like if a car drove past, someone says, oh, there goes Pastor Allen. You know you're not talking about the metal and the wheels. <laughs> you know, Pastor Allen's inside that car. No, when uh, this yeah, is just my vehicle, you could call it my earth suit. You know, when I go to the moon, I need a moon suit. 
And then when I come off the moon, I don't need the moon suit anymore. I get out of it. Well, this is my earth suit. I'm inside here. I'm a spirit person created in the image of God. And God is spirit, and therefore we are spirit. And as we are created in the image of God, my spirit man's inside this body looking out at you, looking out through these windows. And then we have a soul. And sometimes where people confuse it. The Bible says that the, that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it separates spirit from soul. So we understand spirit and soul are two different things. They're related, but they're not the same. Because it goes on to say it separates bone from marrow. So when you're holding a bone, you know you have a bone in your hand, but inside the bone is the marrow. And when you take the marrow out, the bone's still the bone. The marrow completes it. So you are a spirit being and you have a soul. Your soul is your mind, it's your will, and your emotions. So say this with me. I am a spirit. I have a soul, my mind, will, and emotions. And I live in a body. Okay, so now your spirit person, that's who you are. You're born, as when you're born in the earth, you're placed in a body, and then you grow up. When we sin, that spirit man dies. It doesn't mean your body stops existing. It's like when God told Adam in the Garden of Eden, the day you eat of that fruit, you will die. So he ate the fruit. He didn't fall over dead there. What happened? God's presence left his life. And when life leaves, death enters. Death is nothing more than absence of life. So God is life. And so when he left Adam, he was left in death. So he did. He died that day. And then Jesus paid the price so that we could accept him as our Lord and Savior. So the day that we sinned and didn't repent of that sin and walked in that sin, the Spirit of God left us. And the result is our spirit man died. Uh, Paul says, do you not know that you were dead in your sins? So after that, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The moment you do that, your spirit man is recreated. In fact, the Bible says, old things pass away, all things become new. It literally talks there about becoming a new species of being, something that never existed before. So your spirit man is recreated. In the image of God, you're born again, your spirit man saved, born again, inside of your physical body. So now you're a brand new spirit being. And then God's own spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes and moves in with you. Life enters you. That's the born again, how you back in life. And He enters into your life and literally you become one. You and Him, fused in one spirit and now his spirit and your spirit are both in that body together. And his very presence. You see, he may not speak to you out loud. Say, Don't worry, my son, I'm here. You may never hear that. But you can sense his presence. If I had to ask you right now, uh, I can't see anybody, of course. But if I asked you to put your hand up, do you know if you are born again? You know that you know that you know that you know. That you're born again, would you put your hand up? I tell you, people in audiences around the world will say, yes, I know that I'm saved. Maybe you're saying that right now. You know what? I do know that. Now let me ask you, have you ever seen your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? No, most people haven't seen that. Uh, the majority of people don't. Uh, so has God shown up, as an angel shown up, said, don't worry, you're saved? No. I mean, how about if you walked out in your room, uh, out, out of your house one day, and there in the clouds, Alan Bagg is definitely saved. Man, I go, wow, God, look at that. Yes, I know I'm saved. But then all of a sudden, a wind comes up and blows the clouds away. I think, what? Wait, God, what? What did I do? You, know? you see, I can't trust natural things. I can't trust that. But you know what? Deep within, you know. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know. Your knower knows you know that you know that you know you're saved. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit. Every time you say, Lord, He goes, mm-hmm. Just, you know, is that registering in your heart. That's called bearing witness. He bears witness. There's a yes inside of you. Now, that's hearing His voice because it just said yeah. In verse 14, that you led by the Spirit of God. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, the shepherd leads his sheep. How? By the Holy Spirit, bearing witness within your heart. 
Okay, now with that in mind, let's go and have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now it starts to get exciting. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. See, before we saved, uh, no one, I mean, God loved us before we loved Him. And God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. Now think about that. That's 2,000 years ago. God allowed Jesus to die for me before I was ever born. And when I lived my life as an unsafe person, I already had salvation life offered to me. Uh, my place in heaven's already been booked. You see, God's everything, He's already set everything up, but it didn't enter into our hearts. So we didn't know that it was available. Verse 10, But God has revealed them to us, how? Through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? So He's saying, you know, natural things we do know and we understand. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit knows heaven. He knows the spirit realm. He knows the ways of God. He knows the things of God. Now, verse 12, we have received not the spirit of the world. You see, that's a limited evil spirit. But the spirit who is from God, that's the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now underline that, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now that comes through the Holy Spirit who's from God, who knows the things of God. Verse 13, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now get a hold of what he's saying here. He's saying here that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. That's why he told us in Proverbs 3, 5, don't trust your own limited abilities. Don't lean to your own understanding acknowledge God. Now that doesn't mean switch off your brain and become a zombie. Don't do any more thinking. No, what we're talking about is taking my thoughts and start lining them up with what God is saying. Not with my own natural human intellect. There's a lot of things that I've learned through life that have been wrong. And so what I need to do yeah, we say the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit. I can't trust my five senses. I can't trust my own limited human reasoning. But yeah, it says that the things that we speak, not in words which man's wisdom speaks, teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we understand that the Holy Spirit is revealing to us the ways of God, the things of God, the, the, the workings of God, God's system, God's kingdom. And He's doing it by revealing it in our spirit man, through our spirit, by the person of the Holy Spirit. And how does He do it? He bears witness with us, and He leads us. And that's that bearing witness that I want to talk about. Now, how does that work? We're just about out of time, so I'm going to introduce the Scripture, and then what we'll do is talk about it tomorrow. Colossians chapter 3. Let's go to verse 15. Now watch this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now get a hold of this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom. Remember we're talking about walking in wisdom. James says if we lack wisdom, ask God, He'll give that wisdom to us. It's that wisdom that we're walking in. Now notice it says, Let the word of the anointed one dwell in you. The anointing within you, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
And he went about doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed the devil, for God was with him. So the Holy Spirit, God with Jesus, is that anointing. And that's what made him the anointed one, Christ. So this anointing of the anointed one, that's the presence of the person, of the Holy Spirit, in your life is what dwells in you richly for all wisdom. So this wisdom that comes to us comes through the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit. Now look what it says in verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now that word rule is a very interesting word. Just take your pen. If you have your Bible with you, I hope you do. And just take your pen and circle the word rule. Some says, oh, I can't write in my Bible. You know, uh, this is an old Bible. It's a you know, family Bible. Well, then what I suggest you do with your Bible is put it somewhere nice and safe or give it to someone else and then buy a good Bible that you can write into. Amen. Because we must be able to write in our Bible, write their notes there. So well, later on when you read it, you can see it again. Now, take your pen, just circle the word rule and take a little line out into your margin there. And in the margin, write the word B-R-A-B-E-U-O. Now, that word to rule, to umpire, means to direct. Now, I'm going to show you how the Holy Spirit, as an umpire in your life, is able to lead you, to direct you, to help you, to assist you in all your decisions. And that's that bearing witness. He'll lead you in that in wisdom and understanding. I've got something else I need to share with you, and I'll see you right after this. Imagine trying to find a location but not having the directions to get there. The voice of God is like a road map that shows and directs you along the straight and narrow paths of life. The series will help you build your relationship with our Father as well as draw you near to Him. It will help you recognize God's voice to assist you in your relationships in your personal and work situation. The series will even help you to rely on the correct voice when you're faced with a decision that could cost your life. Many people don't realize that as much as you can talk to God, God speaks to you. In fact, He speaks to you all the time. All we have to do is adjust our receivers to be tuned into hearing God's voice. Relationships requires two-way communication. That means that when God called you into relationship with Him, He desired to speak to you as well as listen to the things you have to say. To order this series called 0800 Wisdom, or write to Alan Bag Ministries. Fine tuning your spirit man to hearing the voice of God. God speaking to you all the time, but we may be on a different frequency. We're on the, you know, our own human intellect, other people speaking, noise in society. It's time to get a hold of the series so that you can hear God's voice clearly. This is instruction. It's the Word of God. It's coaching. It's showing you how to do it. If you don't have it yet, get it today. I tell you, this is one of our, our most popular series. Everybody wants to get a hold of this. And we're making it available to you this week. Get it. It's going to transform and change your life. Now, my dear friend, if you are not yet born again, it's impossible to hear God's voice until you have Him in your heart. And so if you're watching this program and you've never yet made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, do it today, right now, there, while you're watching this program. Don't put it off another second. I'm going to pray a prayer and ask you to pray it along with me out loud while you're there. Just say this with me. The Word says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So we're going to do that now. So say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe with all my heart you paid the price and you gave me eternal life. I know you're alive. You were raised from the dead. And today I ask you, rule within my heart. I receive you as my Savior. And from this day on, I know that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And now I too can hear your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. I've got a gift for you. It's this tape. This is going to change your life. You can also get the CD, of course. You just have, need to ask for that. 
Uh, this is a little something to read. It'll tell you what's just happened. And then, of course, our study program. That's all free of charge. I want to send it to you as a seed in your life. And I'll also pay the postage for it. And so all you need to do is just call us on that phone number, write to that address. And as soon as we have your details, I'll send that to you. be with you in a few weeks' time. Well, praise God. It has been an awesome, awesome study. And tomorrow we're going to wrap it up. And I look forward to being with you there. This is Pastor Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bagg Ministries has made this week's Wisdom for Life programs available on CD and DVD. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can.